So now I want to talk about our attachment to our story. Because believe it or not, if you have a story, you're attached to it. Because there are benefits that you receive, even if it's a negative story. Even if it's a story that you want to change. A lot of times it's very hard because we identify with that story. Actually, when it comes to the self, for example, of who you think that you are, your identity, a lot of times your story is attached to that because you start believing that's who you are. So if you change that, who will you be? What will you talk to people about? How will you connect with them? For example, some people might say, well, I want to have all this money. I want to be able to travel. How would that change the dynamics of your life or your relationships? What if all your friends, what they do when they talk about is complain that they don't have time, that they don't have money, and all of a sudden you have more money than them, so you can't complain about those things. Would they look at you differently? Would they interact with you differently? And reality is, as we start changing our story, some of the people that are part of our old story will stay as part of our old story. And some of the people will embrace our new changes, will actually help you, will boost you, will give you a high five, will celebrate with you, and will be part of that new story. And you may even plant seeds to help them change their old story. But keep in mind that we build that identity. For example, most people would say, if I win the lottery, I will be so much happier. I will do this, I will do that. But realistically, when you win the lottery, your chances of depression actually come up. Why? Because most people realize that it changes their story, it changes their dynamics, it changes their relationships. So I'm not trying to say this for you to stick to your old story. I'm just trying to tell you why you may stay attached to that story. In fact, most people that win, for example, the lottery haven't done the work to change their story, so they become bankrupt in the first two years of winning the lottery because they're still following the same pattern, they're still following the same routine that they did, and the things that weren't healthy that's gonna help them maintain abundance once they have it. So there is a section where we're going to be talking about pain and pleasure. And it's pretty important because we're either driven by pain or we're driven by pleasure. So we're trying to get away from that pain or we're trying to move towards some of the pleasure. And understanding those principles are critical and help us make change long term. So when we look at our attachment to our story from a psychological or human development perspective, part of it is that we have certainty, even in this function. Have you ever heard the term, the grass is not always greener on the other side? Well, it can be a lot greener, actually, but we maintain ourselves in that because we start believing that, uh, even though this is chaotic, even though we don't like this, we don't know what's over there. We know how to deal with this drama. We know how to deal with these problems, but we don't know if we're going to be able to deal with those problems. We don't know what's on the other side. So we keep ourselves here when we truly want to be there. I'll give you another example from a biological perspective. For example, uh, there is things that happen that are very addicting. For example, drama in a relationship releases adrenaline. So then after you get that adrenaline release, which is very addicting, what happens usually after a fight? You make up which then releases serotonin, releases dopamine. So you're constantly getting this rush of chemicals that bring you high because they're addicting with the adrenaline, then bring you another high because they make you feel good. So it's that difference that's actually driving you to maintain maybe a part of a story that comes with drama, part of the story that comes with chaos, or the part of the story that you really, really want to change. And we'll talk more about how can you re develop a reward system and how you can you develop that to change your story for the most part. And that's part of it's called the crazy eight. So you might feel anger, 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 happy, 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 and then sadness, sadness, sadness. But each of those feed us. For example, for people, sadness might give them connection to someone else. Anger might get someone else's attention, might get them to actually pay attention to what we're trying to say or what we're trying to do, makes us feel empowered. And then we have that little bit of happiness. So that's part of the biological part that we may be attached to at a chemical level. And again, we'll talk more about how we can develop reward system. But also at a different level is that we might be benefiting from our problems that we have in our story. For example, we might use them as an excuse to fail or not even try when we want to do certain things. 
For example, I want to do this with my life, but I can't because I'm always busy or I have this relationship. I'm dealing with my relationship and, and that just takes up so much of my time. I deal with problems with my kids. I deal with problems at work. So all these different excuses give us a buyout of why we're not trying to follow our dreams or why we're not trying to follow our purpose. It also sometimes hides the deeper issues. For example, when we have safe problems, those are problems that are at a superficial level. We can constantly deal with those because we can really change them at any point. But when we have quality problems, so deep problems that we mask, if we got rid of the safe problems, then we would find that we have to deal with bigger things. So it helps us hide deeper issues. In fact, I remember in my life, I had all these issues, all these problems at, at one point when I started, you know, back in college. And I realized that it was a matter of choice, that I was creating the story of constantly having issues, constantly being someone else's savior, constantly dealing with other people's problems. And I said, enough is enough. I need to deal with my life and what I want to create. So why do you keep trying to be everyone's savior? And when I did that, I cut myself away from everyone for a little bit because I wanted to redefine my story. And what was crazy about it is that I found myself in this weird place with no problem to solve, no issues that were huge that I was trying to deal with. So to me, it was kind of like that transition point. But again, there was a biological aspect to it. There was that identity aspect of the self where I'm constantly someone else's savior. There was the psychological where I, I felt like I was contributing, like uh, I was part of something deeper in someone else's life. So I had to rearrange a lot of those things to help create my new story, to let go of the attachment that I had. So the first thing that you have to do is first identify the benefits that you're getting from your old story. So how is that story benefiting you? How is it maintaining maybe your relationships or how can you use, are you using that as an excuse not to move from point A to point B? Because your story could change drastically. But again, there might be something that is holding you back that's benefiting you. Also, identify the fear or the pain making that changes. Would that change mean that maybe you have to change your relationship? Maybe you have to change your job? Maybe you have to change another aspects of your habits? Maybe you just don't feel like you're ready to make that changes. So what will you lose if you change your story? Because if you... Think about it. There are things that you're going to lose. And those are, might be the things that you're kind of scared of. And once you start realizing how your life will change and what some of the things that you're attached to, you might realize that you don't need them in your life, that you don't need to be attached to them. And it might help you let them go to be able to truly, truly create your new story. And like I said, next we're going to be going over some of the reward systems that you can do to help you move from the old story to this new story. Thank you.